Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, whenever it is that you're watching this. Welcome to House Wine uh, for February. We're in February already, I can't believe it. Um, I can say this every time, this is the best house wine lineup. It's probably the best house wine lineup. I think what we had for December was pretty, pretty awesome, and the January one last month was, was lovely. Um, we've got a nice, diverse little blend of stuff for you for this uh, for this month. So, without further ado, I'm going to jump into the first white wine. So, overview. Sorry, before we jump in, two white wines, two red wines, as you can see. Um, first white is from uh, France, Muscadet from Loire in France. Second one is a Chenin Blanc from Swartland. We have had this one before a few months ago. Very nice. Thought we'd try it again. Um, and then next up we have a uh, sort of Sangiovese blend from uh, Italy and then we have a uh, Rioja from Spain. So, first one, Muscadet. Muscadet is a region, it's a spot in France, the mouth of the Loire Valley um, going out onto the ocean. Atlantic, Vic? Uh, yeah, Atlantic, why not? <laughs> yes. <laughs> the Atlantic. Um, <laughs> and Muscadet, so Muscadet is a region, um, the grape that goes into making this is not called Muscadet, it's, it's quite an odd name, it's called Melon de Bourgogne and it makes very sort of light, fresh, delicate wines. Um, I always push the glass at you, but you can probably never really see. Um, so Melon de Bourgogne, it's a bit of a mouthful of a grape variety. Um, it's quite similar to Chardonnay, um, so people who quite like sort of white burgundy and light delicate fresh Chardonnays. Muscadet, a good quality Muscadet, it's really, well, probably like right up your street. Um, this is made by Nicolas Idiot, um, and he is sort of like a travelling winemaker. He focuses on really good quality, Handmade, well his mission is to produce small production, artisan, handmade, really good quality wines. Travelled all over the world, trading in various different regions from Bordeaux to the USA to New Zealand and Australia. A lot of the best winemakers over the years will have gone to various different regions to go and train so that they can understand how to make wine and to grow grapes in various different regions, different climates so they get better at what they do and qualify them during their uh, early years, I guess maybe sort of teens going to 20s, they might travel all around, pick up all these different um, useful techniques, bring them back home and apply them to what they do um, at home and start making some great wines. So that's what Nicolas has done. Um, he makes wines pretty much all, some of the, a lot of the most well-known regions all over France. Um, so at Melon de Bourgogne, it's made from 45-year-old vines, I've mentioned this many times before, old vines produce really good quality fruit. So old vine gets less fruits produced, better quality, more intense, gives you more of a flavour of a great variety and of the region. Um, near the Atlantic, fresh, cooling, you have these lovely sort of moderating um, influences from the ocean, so you end up with a nice sort of fresh light wine, but what they do to balance the freshness and the acidity in this wine, they, he, Nicola leaves the uh, wine on the skins, uh, not on the skins, on what's called the lees. So if you see the word lees, L-W-E-S, -E means the sediment. So if you leave the wine in the sediment for a little while, it gets richer and rounder. So you have freshness and you have richness and roundness. Cool, next, Chenin Blanc from South Africa, from Swartland, another coastal region, right um, overlooking the what ocean is it, Vic? The South African Ocean. South African Ocean. Um, okay. You get the Cape Doctor, which is interesting, we of course. You get the Cape Doctor. Did um, I go to Swartland? Is... Well, obviously it brings that, as you know, it is Atlantic, isn't it? It's the Atlantic breeze that sort of just cools, because obviously South African. It's a nice ocean breeze. Yeah, yeah. So what happens, you have a nice warm region, very hot, you have these lovely kind of cooling breezes from the ocean, so you get a nice sort of balanced environment, ripeness and freshness as well. Chenin Blanc, one of my favourite great varieties. This is made by um, uh, two cousins. Um, so Ardi and, what's his, you can probably tell I've got my notes down here. Yeah. Um, Ardi and, what's his cousin called? I can't remember his cousin's Bob. name. Bob. Bob. Hein. Ardi and Hein, Bob and Horst. I've met Hein very briefly once, met Ardi a few times. Lovely guy. I just didn't remember his name, <laughs> obviously. Um, uh, we've done a few of his wines before, uh, well two of his wines before, House Wine, done a red and a white. This is new vintage, it's slightly different. So it's Chenin Blanc, it's had a little bit of what you call skin contact for, 15 days I think. So it's not an orange wine, but it's just given, um, the skin contact's given the wine a little bit more sort of richness and a bit more depth. Um, he sometimes does that with his white wine, so you get a little bit more kind of complexity. 
Hardy, like Nicholas, he's trained all over the world, Bordeaux, New Zealand, Australia, back to South Africa, all of these uh, fantastic uh, techniques that he's learned all over the world. What else? Um, so the Baden Host, um, uh, so winemaking philosophy is that you're very natural, what they call like sort of biological farming. So very, very um, um, healthy farming and then very natural winemaking. So um, very little, nothing actually added to the wines at all. Um, and this is, so this, this is called the Secateurs Chenin Blanc, that's the name of the wine. Um, and it is arguably one of the best um, wines that you do, house wine, and also you do it in bottle as well. Isn't he the guy who has the record player and the coffee machine in, in the winery? He does, yeah. He's yeah. quite a geezer, isn't he? He's quite a geezer. He's got quite a gnarly <laughs> looking winery. Um, and he's one of the sort of big charismatic winemakers from, uh, from South Africa. He's part, he's been instrumental of a movement of winemakers called the Swartland Revolution that have been really, really influential over the last sort of 15, 20 years or so to raise the game, raise the quality of winemaking, particularly in Swartland. So that's why you have all these amazing, uh, really good quality natural wines coming from, uh, from Swartland over the last few years or so. Very lucky to have his wines. Um, next up, uh, the Vedavasa family, we do quite a few different wines, house wines by them. This is called the Agredo, um, Agredo Tinto. Rosso, we're not in Spain, we're in Italy, Grado Rosso. This is made <clears throat> from so 100 years worth of uh, winemaking experience um, and it is predominantly made from Sangiovese and a little bit of Merlot and a little bit of Cabernet Sauvignon. So Sangiovese being like indigenous grape variety, you tend to find it down in Tuscany. Now this one is made in Veneto, so about an hour kind of inland from, from Venice. Um, very sensitive winemaking. Um, and they apply uh, like a sort of philosophy to their winemaker or their viticulture, so their great grain, what you might call sort of lut raisonne, which means that they only kind of intervene with preventative measures if, if they desperately kind of need to. Um, what does it smell like? What does it taste like? I'll put down silky cherries, it's probably the best way of describing this. So cherries is a really good um, tasting note for, for Sangiovese. Um, it's got a slightly kind of spicy kind of character to it on the nose as well. Soft, round, spicy silky, juicy, amazing stuff. Finally, we have a Rioja. So this is made uh, by Martin and Gloria in a spot called uh, Rioja Baja. Um, what's interesting about Rioja Baja, Rick? Ah, that's a crap question, isn't it? Oh God, my <laughs> mind was somewhere else. Um, it's ah. a special region. It's, <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's slightly kind of like lower, uh, lower, lower altitude. So it's slightly kind of warmer, which means that you produce wines which are maybe slightly riper and rounder, whereas Alto is slightly kind of higher, higher altitude, cooler. So when you sniff this, you can really, really feel the warmth in the wine. Um, it's made 100% Tempranillo, and Martin and Gloria, they um, look after about five acres worth of vines, like their own vines, but they work with other local growers who work very, very naturally uh, and organically. And they apply this sort of philosophy of um, um, oh, cuckoo, it's, it's called kukalka, which means sort of like the one straw revolution, which is to do with very, very sort of hands-off farming. It's a very, very natural way of, of farming. And I think it kind of originated in Japan. Um, look it up, it's really interesting stuff. But a lot of winemakers kind of apply this philosophy to how they make uh, wine these days, or at least kind of how they grow their grapes, because you know, the least, you kind of intervene, um, the better quality of the fruit will generally kind of be within, within reason, I guess. Very healthy, no chemicals. So this is a great natural wine. And the idea around this wine is called Vina Illusion Rioja Tinto. Um, the idea behind this is that it's no oak. So there's a lot of new winemakers from Rioja producing wines in what's called like a Joven Hoven style, which means no oak, fresh, young. So it means that you can really taste the fruit without all that like uh, heavy, spicy, kind of oaky flavour. We're all about kind of trying to give you a true representation of the grape and the region. And this is just a really, really good example of that. So I hope you enjoy. I uh, hope it wasn't too much of a long one. Um, how many minutes are you on, Vic? Probably about six, seven. Um, hope you enjoy. Keep your feedback on house wines coming in. It's great to see you guys drinking them all at home. Having your house wine bottles on Instagram. Um, and we'll see you uh, see you next month. Cheers.